washes the shore from sea to sea. This called Well from Diversity Opera Arts Company. I am the executive director. And here today I have Ann Dalton and I'll let her explain a little bit about herself. And we're gonna discuss the origins of spirituals. And I'll let her go ahead and explain a little bit of her background. Hello, my name is Annie Harrison Dalton. Uh, I'm a descendant of the Harrisons, uh, actually from uh, the Coolamy Plantation, that were on the Coolamy Plantation uh, here in North Carolina. Uh, I grew up uh, in the city of Lexington. I was born and grew up in Lexington. Uh, but my mother is a Harrison, and she was born in a place called Petersville, which was the actual uh, part of the name of the slave owner, Peter Harrison. Uh, so she grew up in that area. And this was an area where most of the Harrisons had congregated uh, from that plantation. Wow. Okay. And you're also a minister, correct? I am a minister, a retired hospice chaplain. Yes, and she's also a wonderful vocalist. <laughs> music, no, I love music. Wanted to get your take on spirituals and, and the foundations of it. And also the link to not, not only just singing spirituals, but maybe the biblical background as well from some of these spirituals. So I'll let you take what you want to say there. Okay, I think... I, I would start at uh, the the book that Gwendolyn Sims Warren wrote, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. And she yes. talks about spirit, uh, the ministry of music and its importance to our spiritual lives is actually the direct fruit 
uh, of their early African Americans journey in this particular land uh, and how it is a, it's a testimony of what we're feeling. Uh, for instance, when, when I was a little girl, we would play church uh, or we would sing these songs because my granddad, who I call Deacon Grandpa, and my grandma was sit, they, they were instrumental in our lives because we never went to a kindergarten or daycare. We stayed home. My mom worked. We stayed home with our grandparents. It was nothing for you to see grandpa get up in the morning and go out on the porch and he'd pray, pray out loud to God. And you'd hear him sing a song. It was nothing to hear my grandma singing around the house as she ironed our clothes or whatever work she had to do. And these songs were uh, examples of the struggles. And that's the way the slave songs were, whatever they were going through. For instance, when we would play, we would sing. And see, you heard it probably from uh, Minister John P. Key, if I make it to the city. It'll be all right. Well, that represented for those people the struggles they were going through, but to let people know, and what our young people need to hear now is that I may struggle, but I'm not giving up. So right. what you hear from those on the porch, you might hear, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. If I make it to the city, it will be all, all right. So he was just saying, oh, I have to cry sometimes. Uh, trouble sometimes. It's an uphill journey. But if I just make it to the city, I'm going to be all right. And they would take some of the songs when you got to the songs of the, uh, the, the European areas where where sometimes kids now same claim that they adopted the oppressor's religion. But we mm -hmm. know that our people had religion when we came here. Mm -hmm. When you look back in the, when you look in the Bible, uh, for instance, when Philip uh, read scriptures and the eunuch heard the scriptures and said, what can I do? I want to be baptized. He, this, this man was from Africa, uh, from the dark continent. And so we, we, we knew we had religion, we had faith, we had spirituality, we, we knew God before we got here. We right. may not have known the language that was being taught, but they, they, they knew how to take their experience and make it live. If you remember Reverend Mack, he was wonderful because he preached, he was a pastor of our church in Emmanuel, and the pastor down at, at Buncombe Baptist Church, which is in Petersville. And he, he would sing those kinds of songs, uh, telling the story. I met God one morning. My soul was feeling bad. My heart was heavy laden. I had a bow down here, but he lifted my burden. And he made me so glad. I just want to let the world know that I've got something well in. You know, those kinds of songs. Grandpa would sit out on the porch and uh, he had worked all of his life in the fields. And one time a cotton bowl had hit him in the eye and uh, made him blind. And he, hmm. he, and so he gathered up enough money to get away from tenant farming, which was actually another way of, another sense of slavery. Right. Uh, and, and the man had been real abusive to the mule. He begged for the mule. And so when he got off the farm, he brought the mule with him. Uh, but you would hear him sometimes in the morning singing, when I get to heaven, I'm going to sit down. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sit down. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sit down. Sit down and rest a little while. 
and so and the appearance was gone on the glory or, or something he, he'd say looking for my mother then i'll sit down looking for my father sit down and he'd go on with it he'd go on with it uh those songs and that's why when i came to emmanuel i was uh able to sing those songs that I had heard growing up as a child. Right. And, and this is Emmanuel Baptist Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Right. 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 And, the, and the church where I was baptized down at uh, uh, Files Chapel uh, had a spiritual choir uh, and they had many songs, the old songs that they would sing. In this area, there's another thing too. The songs, the spiritual songs that they sing sometimes depend on what area they come from. Right. Many people mm -hmm. in Winston-Salem come from South Carolina and right. their beat, their beat is a little bit different than the beat that you would get here in North Carolina. And then people in Virginia sing it even different, but it's always you always follow the leader. Sometimes there is the there is the call and the response right. in, in the spiritual song. Uh, there is this one Mr. Massa used to sing, who builds the ark? And the people would say, oh, Noah, who builds the ark? Oh, no. But, and, and so he would go on and tell the story about Noah taking down the trees and the, getting the, the, the equipment to build the ark. Right. And, and we know that these spiritual songs are, they strengthen us. Uh, right. For instance, like Paul, the apostle Paul was locked in a prison and he started, he and he and his partner started to sing a song and we know what happened there. The jail doors right. were, were ajar. Right. So that's so, kind of what it's like. Would you say that spirituals were created based off of scriptural reference um, or, and, and, or and um, based on code, you know? Okay, some of both, both. Some of that uh, scriptural reference, maybe what they heard in the church so, uh, you know, for instance, here in Winston-Salem, they talk about uh, certain churches where the, the Blacks were seated in the balcony, balcony and the Whites were down in the main sanctuary. Hmm. Uh, and they heard the stories. They heard the Bible stories. And what they grabbed out of it was that God was on the side of the person who was being exploited. Right. Mm. And so their songs came out of that. Some of the songs came out of that. It was it was script what they understood of the scriptures. It was mm -hmm. it was based on that. Uh, some of the songs may be generic. But you know what I what I am what I do uh, get excited about is that the songs that they're the they're bringing rap into the to the church mm -hmm. some of the songs that they're doing. And it's not very different from what some of our slave, some of our ancestors sang. Right. Because they told stories. They mm -hmm. would tell stories in their songs. And in telling that story, like for instance, the call and response, they would respond and then they would stop for a verse and the man would, uh, or, or woman who was leading the song would always tell a story. Right, right, right. So, so I think nowadays it's just because the world has changed so much. Mm. These young people don't have an, the experience. We have different experiences. Right. Times have just changed. Um, so the children will say, I don't want to hear those old slave songs. Uh, but, but I think there's their attitude is going to be affected too because they're fine because we have movements like Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. We're finding out, young people are finding out now that it's not 
it's not like I thought. They, it, I'm, right. I'm not being accepted because of the color of my skin. Right. It's, it's almost like the movement when some of the music changed when when there was the great movement from the South and Blacks start going North. Mm-hmm. And they thought it was different, but it was not different. They were just, they were, they were, uh, there was segregation. Uh, and they were, there were people that were against them just like they were in the South. Right, right, right. So basically it just kind of transformed. I mean, well, I mean, to be honest, I mean, spiritual, out of spirituals, you know, the blues came out of spirituals. That's exactly I right. I mean, yeah. country came out of spirituals. Mm-hmm. And they all had the same origin of telling a story and, That's right. you know, sharing their woes or, you know. So, I mean, well, a whole lot of American music <laughs> came out of spirituals, rock and roll. Exactly. If exactly. you want to trace it all back, jazz. I know in my personal studies, of spiritual, sometimes slaves would sing specific songs to kind of guide people to the north. Right. Like, I believe Behold the Star was one. Mm-hmm. I want to say Go Down Moses, but I'm not sure what the message would have been there. Um, did you want to elaborate on that? Or do you have an opinion on that? Or how do you... I, I I agree with what you're saying that they used it as code to to uh, let the others know what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going down by the river. Right. You no, know, hey, we we going meet us down by the river. I right. probably leave uh, songs like in the morning when the dark cloud rolls away. Things like that, songs like that. I believe those mm-hmm. songs had a meaning for them. Right, right, right. And, okay, and well, used, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was listening. No, nah, and they used it for as code as many right. things about people. I'm, I'm I'm taking on this this uh, hobby now of sewing and making quilts. And mm-hmm. as the women would sit together and do quilts, sometimes the quilts were. On the quilts were the code or the maps of how they were supposed to go. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Wow. Our our people have been been very smart. We have not right. been given credit for everything. Right, 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 right. Well, what do you think the importance of let's say H.T. Burley or Hall Johnson, um, who else? Roland Hayes, and then we'll get to uh, just to Hairston in a few minutes. What do you think the importance of them preserving it in um, compositions? Uh, or do you think it's of importance of putting it in concert? Oh, yes. Yes, and the story should be told. Because right. the thing is, we have not told our story. Uh, it's like, um, well, we were told, and maybe right. with your age group, but our younger children have not heard the story. Right. Uh, they just don't know. And that's why they don't understand a lot of what's going on, because they don't know the stories of old. Mm-hmm. We, sit on the, we sit on the porch. And grandpa told us the story. There is, there's a story in my family from my grandmother that her great grandmother was a, was a twin, and that because the Harrisons supplied each other with slaves, that a twin was taken to another plantation. And so there's a part of our family that has never been found. Wow. So that's the story has never been told. Mm. My, my, my grandchildren don't want to hear it because they don't know anything about slavery. It's never been told. Right. Right. I, I try to teach mine though. But, <laughs> but you're right. Um, because, and I think that's the disconnect now mm-hmm. with, in, in, particularly in classical music when they are assigning these spirituals to these students 
that they literally, because history has been so whitewashed, that they literally don't know what they're looking at. Um, versus if they received an, okay, if they received an Aryan, right? They would say, mm -hmm. the professor would say, well, go and research the opera and find out what the opera's about and figure out what the character's doing in the song. Uh, for people who don't know what an aria is, aria basically is a a song that's been taken out of an ar an opera and performed mm -hmm. on stage. That's for people who don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, we would be told, "Well, do some research on it." Um, but sometimes with spirituals, I think they think because it's in English, and they think the words are simple, that mm -hmm. it doesn't deserve the same reverence and you know, study mm -hmm. on it. Um, and I feel like there should be some kind of training on how to properly interpret these spirituals, even though I know people will say, well, everybody has their own interpretation, but you have to know the context of something right before you start performing something. You can't just, oh, I'm gonna sing this and it's gonna be fun. And then often, and a lot of times, another thing is, you know, spirituals are complicated. Not saying that they're complicated in a way of making your head hurt with different words and things like that. But I say it's complicated in rhythm. Mm -hmm. It's not the, oh, one, two, three waltz, you know, right. <laughs> or you know, or what they did in, you know, the dances that they did in the 1700s. We were doing something totally rhythmically different, uh, mm -hmm. harmonically, it was totally different. And I think people take advantage of that when they see it on paper. And then sometimes that students will get in trouble because they realize, ooh, when they start singing it, this is a whole lot harder than I, than I thought. Mm -hmm. Um, so I kind of feel like some kind of way I wish that we could, uh, at least from my perspective, I wish there was some kind of way that we could bring back the, the proper study, regardless of what your color is, what your race is, mm -hmm. uh, the proper study of, um, spirituals, even the dialect. You know, they'll say, right. oh, well, it's got the apostrophe there. So I got to, oh, no, that's not, that's not, <laughs> that doesn't mean you, you character, characterize it like it's in a Gone with the Wind movie. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, but I didn't know if you had, or if you had an opinion on that. Uh, but I just find sometimes it can cause a problem when people are just presented a piece of music and they don't know the historical background behind it. They say, oh, this looks fun, you know, mm -hmm. instead of kind of saying, okay, what is this really about? What am I singing about? What is the, the history of the people who are performing, you know, who, who we receive this music from, if that makes any sense. Right. You know, that music was so is so meaningful to our people. When I was a little girl, uh, there would be bands of people who travel from church to church on one Saturday night of a month, and they called it the all night singing. Mm. And they would sing these spirituals. And there would be a group from Salisbury, a group from Charlotte, group from Greensboro, and they would meet in Lexington this month. Next month, they may meet in Charlotte and they would just sing those spirituals all night long. Wow. And people would carry their lunch or carry some food and they would take a break. <clears throat> Excuse me, after, after 12 or around 12 and they would eat and then they would come back and sing some more until about five or six in the morning. Mm. Uh, and well, I know in the area where I grew up, those songs meant so much because you didn't have people who were gifted to play piano. Uh, sometimes you might have a piano or if somebody gave you one, had an organ in your church right. and nobody could play it. Right. Well, so they depended heavily on the foot stomping, 
right. songs that they right. would sing. And that's what those people would sing. And I tell you, we, our mama took us a couple of several times. Uh, she didn't stay all night, but she, you know, stayed there long enough that she heard as much as she wanted. And uh, there was some good singing there. The other thing about spirituals I like, too, is that uh, when people didn't know, and people talk about this, hemlining mm. is a part of spirituals. You you may not know the hymn, but you know the tune. Right. And so the old deacon would get up and say, uh, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. And he'd say that whole first verse. And then he'd ask somebody with a suitable tune, he'd say, somebody with a suitable tune, help us to sing this song. And right. then he'd start patting his feet. Mm -hmm. And then he'd start like, I, have, I heard the, the voice. And then he's gone, and I know you heard that at Emmanuel. Oh, of course. Yeah, right. yeah. But that's right. that's him lining. And right. sometimes sitting on the porch with my granddaddy, it, it, we didn't have air conditioning. We'd be sitting out there at night, and all the neighbors that were row houses on the sides of us, and the neighbors sitting on their porch. And my granddaddy might kick up a song. He might start singing something, and pretty soon all the houses that were close to us would be singing that spiritual song, whatever hmm. he decided to sing. So uh, I just love the spiritual songs. Uh, and then uh, songs like when uh, Dr. Jester Harrison came to Lexington, uh, and I, as I explained, he, I don't know that he's my blood cousin, but he called all the Harrisons cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a he brought Harrisons from all this area together to have a concert. Now, one uh, second, one second. Tell us who he is first, so people can know who, who we're talking about. Uh, he's a composer. He we most people would know him as Deacon Riley on Amen, mm -hmm. but he was really Dr. Jester Harrison, a composer. Uh, a musically educated man and went all over the world talking about spirituals, teaching spirituals. And he used to say that he could teach a choir in 15 minutes to sing a, a, a song, a spiritual song, regardless of what their language was. But he, he brought all of us together during one year when the Harrisons reunion was going on uh, uh, down, down in, the, in the Lexington area. And he brought everybody together in Lexington to have a concert. And songs like, didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? Mm -hmm. And why not every man? Uh, those songs that, that people were looking for freedom and who wanted to be free. Uh, it just made us feel good, real good about ourselves, knowing that we, reminding us that we've contributed so much to the music industry uh and that what music really means to us it really is a ministry right uh, it's a ministry and it is the fruit of of our journey uh from africa to to this to 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 this country uh it just means so much and sometimes when you just sing an old spiritual you can you can feel it uh you can just feel it uh, it, it just feels good. You feel it all over. Uh, that's what I like about the spirituals. Now, now, what did you, can you name something that you can particularly yeah. remember him saying during this, um, what, what, what do they call it when you all got, was it just a concert or? It was, a, it was a concert. Uh -huh. Okay. Is there anything that you remember in particular that he said that you know, struck a chord with you the most? I, I think probably just talking about our ancestors mm. and, and, um, and 
I can't, can't think of the name of the man right now. I, I forget the, but That's anyway, okay. the name of the man who wrote the book about all the Harrison plantations, mm. and he talked about those and and in between singing, he was always about educating people about where you came from, right? And uh, singing those songs and talking about what what people felt in those songs, and uh, it was just. It was just wonderful. It was good. Well, for those of us who have um, African lineage, what would you say for those who feel like, well, I don't really want to sing spirituals or I don't really get the connection or maybe I should just kind of let that go. What, what would you say to encourage them to continue on with that specific tradition? I think what is happening right now, even with schools, saying go back and teach our history. And I would say to those who are adults, go back and learn your history. Right. And you will find out that these songs came out of our suffering. Right. Out of our suffering, we got songs of victory. That, that you know. Suicide among young black people is rising, mm -hmm. and it, because what they see on us, we take a we. Sometimes we need to go to a doctor. Sometimes we need medicine, but right. we try we try to get away from suffering. Mm -hmm. They need to know that sometimes you suffer and it makes you better for it. These people mm. suffered, and these songs came out of their suffering. And they, they, they learn to do things right. My Lord and I, we gonna walk together. My Lord and I uh, walk on this road till my feet get bare. Gonna hitch on my e wings and try the air. In other words, I'm, just, I'm gonna keep on walking. I'm gonna keep on talking. Keep on doing right. You treat me wrong, but I'm gonna treat you right. That's what they need to hear. Right. Uh, that uh, I really think that our young people need to see that out of our suffering, I'm not out here begging to suffer, but right. if we don't suffer, then there is we can we can get victory out of our suffering. Right. Uh, these songs came of victory, of triumph came out of it. Look at the the civil rights movement. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Mm -hmm. Turn me around. Gonna keep on marching. Uh, and so that's what we have to see. What these young people need to see in their lives that no matter what is happening, you gotta keep going. Right. You know, so that's what I want the people who are singing these songs to go back and understand the story of why, why, why did they sing a song like that? Uh, and and it will be more meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. I absolutely agree. Because of my ancestors, more than anything else, I make sure that I have spiritual sets on my recital uh, because I don't want their efforts to go in vain. I don't want not only my ancestors, but you know the communities, you know blood, sweat, and tears that came from that. You know, they all tell a story. And I feel like it's very important for us, even though we might get a little education and we learn how to sing properly and articulate our words. And, you know, we, we've learned how to sing French, German and all of that stuff. That's all lovely. But at the end of the day, you've got to remember where you came from and how you got there. Because if it wasn't for those people who carried us through with these spirituals, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing on stage today. That's right. And know their struggles. I'm mm -hmm. an admirer of Marian Anderson. Yes. And I had the opportunity to go to Constitutional Hall mm. uh, because attorney Janet Reno, when she was the when she was the attorney general. Mm -hmm presented an award 
uh, to judge Loretta Biggs, our church member. Oh, yes. Uh, so I, and, and the presentations and all of this was done at Constitutional Hall. And when I got in there and sat down and I thought, many years ago, Marian Anderson could not sing here. That's right. She sure couldn't. And I just wanted to get up and I thought, here I sit. Mm -hmm. A woman is receiving an award from attorney Reno. I just wanted to jump up and start shouting. Right. Uh, it just did something to my spirit. Right. Uh, and I could I could hear my grandma singing on one of those wash days, Lord, we'll overcome someday. You know, mm -hmm. and and thought she they've overcome that. Black folk can come in. She she did get her chance to sing in Constitutional Hall. Right. And so, and so uh, we struggle. We fall down, but we get up. That's right. I mean, somebody sent me a thing that says, we fall down and the devil says, stay down. But God says, get up. That's what these songs are about. I just wish. I'm hoping that when they start teaching Black history as it really <laughs> is, and included with the history of this country, that that kind of music and our story will be on the forefront. Because everybody in America as a whole needs to know where these genres came from. And if we throw away what spirituals are and what their backgrounds are, then everything else will eventually be lost because that's the foundation of it all. If they would just be still, long enough to hear it. They are so, those spirituals are so much a part of me that while I was doing uh, hospice chaplaincy, so many times I would sing those songs to my patient. If a patient has Alzheimer's and they have a spiritual, uh, they have a background, a church background, a faith background, if you sing one of those songs to them, you can get a person. I was doing a eulogy and start singing uh, a hymn and the wife of the deceased person had not been talking at all but when she when I started singing she started singing I was singing Amazing Grace and mm -hmm. I was just singing singing it uh, a cappella mm -hmm. and she started singing with me wow this music will 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 I almost say wake up the dead, but mm -hmm. I have used it so much. It has brought so much peace. Well, one of my gifts is bringing peace to dying people and to families of dying people. And of the many people that I've been with at hospice who were dying, if I would sing to them, music would just give them the life and give them the strength they needed. Sometimes mm -hmm. they didn't know what to say. Sometimes they were fearful. And I would just come up and say, I must tell Jesus all of my trouble. They would open their eyes and they would smile uh, or something that let me know that they could go now in peace. Mm. So music, music is powerful. It's powerful. It is. Amazing grace. And I, I don't want to totally butcher the meaning, um, but he was, help me remember, he was an ex-slave capturer or? Yeah, slave, transporting slaves mm -hmm. from, from Africa to, to this country. And I know he felt convicted and that's where yeah. that song came out of. And he turned out at the end of his life to be an abolitionist. Uh-huh. Everybody sings Amazing Grace towards their own interpretation in their life. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I feel like, again, Th those stories are very important, especially in American fabric. I, I can't forget this one. Go down, Moses. Yes. Tell old Pharaoh. They, they were all God's on the side of the oppressed. Right. And and so they were singing like, go down, Moses. And our spiritual choir still sings that every now and then. Thank you so much for giving such a wonderful and honest interview for us on behalf of diversity opera we all say thank you and thank you for blessing us with your beautiful voice and your presence it's been a joy to talk to you we are so proud of you because to see you just grow up and 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 grow up and
So thank you so much. And I am going to sign out and everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. You take care. was born February 1st, 1902. He was a famous poet, musical liberist, civil rights activist. He is most celebrated in the classical arts for being a liberist for Kurt Wells' opera Street Scene. Paul Johnson, famous African-American composer, conductor, and coach, also used his writing for his art song compositions. Here is one of Langston's popular poems. The Negro speaks of rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood and human veins. The soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bather in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen the muddy blossom and turn it golden in the sunset. I've known rivers. Ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers.